who is down here? I hate saying this, but I feel like the baby, oh God, Whoa. was killed. That die came out of the wall. Oh, he had a hat on, like a war hat. It's peaceful sometimes, but it could get hectic. Yes. This just blows my, my mind. And when did he die? Last year. Well, you even wake up with scratches and bruises. Yeah. OK. Look at this one of the scratches she took pictures of. Number 10, terrifying haunting unleashed. The chilling atmosphere enveloped the investigators as they delved deeper into the haunting. Eerie footsteps echoed from unseen entities, sending shivers down their spines. A spectral presence toyed with their senses, luring them into dark corners of the house. The room known as the Ghost Room exuded a whirlwind of malevolent energy, hinting at a sinister force lurking within. Unexplained voices whispered unsettling messages, while heat fluctuations and tapping noises signaled the spectral activity's intensity. As they set up solo experiments, each investigator felt a growing sense of unease. Automatic writing and shadow trackers aimed to capture glimpses of the unseen, but the oppressive aura intensified. Down in the basement, the atmosphere thickened with a palpable sense of dread, as if unseen eyes watched their every move. Whispers of a woman, not human but a malevolent force, sent chills through the investigators. With each passing moment, the haunting escalated, leaving them questioning the true nature of the entities haunting the house. What are you hearing? I am just heard, go downstairs and get my toys out. I want to... Who is down here? It's like a tornado of energy just spinning around. Is it a human presence that no, you feel? No, it's not. Number nine, battleground for an elderly couple. In a quaint town near Tucson, Rita, an elderly couple, Karen and Dawn, find themselves in the midst of a nightmarish ordeal within their supposedly serene retirement home. A distress call to Amy from Karen reveals a haunting tale of chaos, desperation, and looming danger. Karen's voice trembles as she recounts the relentless paranormal activity plaguing their once promised forever home. From inexplicable noises and eerie shadows to alarming physical assaults like scratching and burning sensations, the house has become a battleground of terror. Dawn's deteriorating health and volatile mood swings add to the household's turmoil, raising concerns about the imminent arrival of Karen's daughter and her young grandchildren. The air is thick with fear and uncertainty as Karen reveals encounters with a mysterious entity disguised as a priest, unleashing waves of nausea, headaches, and insomnia. Amy's investigation unearths a sinister presence intent on breaking down its victims, preying on vulnerabilities and inflicting physical and psychological torment. As Amy delves deeper into the shadows and mysterious manifestations, the house's dark secrets begin to unravel. A parade of shadowy figures, lined up like a macabre procession, hints at a deeper connection between the priest entity and the restless unalive haunting the property. The stakes are high, as Karen and Dawn's pleas for peace and safety intensify. Amy's task becomes clear, to banish the malevolent forces plaguing this once idyllic home and restore the semblance of normalcy for this elderly couple and their impending guests. The battle against the paranormal rages on as the living wrestle with forces beyond their understanding, trapped in a relentless cycle of fear and uncertainty. Number 8. Terrifying Encounters in the Treadwell House As dusk descends upon the Treadwell House, Shane delves into the depths of paranormal history, facing chilling revelations and spectral encounters. Standing before opposing mirrors, ancient gateways to unknown realms, Shane's senses tingle with an oppressive energy, hinting at a tragic past. Visions pierce his mind, a baby's cries, a mother's anguish. The mirror whispers of a dark secret, a baby drowned, a mother's heart shattered. Shane's unease intensifies, the air thick with sorrow and despair. Echoes of bells and footsteps haunt the corridors as unseen forces beckon. With each inquiry, the past unravels, revealing a grim tale of mistreated servants and stolen innocence. Shane's scrying and spirit box sessions unveil a heartbreaking truth, a mother forced into a dire deed tormented by guilt. But the horror doesn't end there. Shadows lurk, doors slam, and Shane's nerves fray. A shadow's figure's menacing presence sends shivers down his spine, warning of unseen dangers lurking in the shadows. As Shane and the team grapple with spectral manifestations, a chilling realization dawns. They are not alone, and the Treadwell household secrets darker than they ever imagined. 
I hate saying this, but I feel like the baby, oh God, oh. was killed. I'd like to do something called the psychomantium experiment. It's also a form of mirror scrying. Number seven, echoes of the past. In the depths of the Treadwell house, whispers of the past echo through its haunted halls. Cindy and the team delve into the dark secrets hidden within its walls, seeking answers from restless spirits. As Shane ventures upstairs and Cindy probes the children's room, the atmosphere turns icy. EVP sessions and spirit box experiments unravel tales of soldiers and Native American unrest, intertwining the fates of living and the unalive. A spirit's chilling command reverberates through the air, get off of our land. The team's investigations lead them to confrontations with vengeful souls, seeking justice for desecrated burial grounds and ancestral memories. Cindy's visions paint a grim picture of conflict and tragedy by the water's edge. The spirits demand recognition, their cries echoing across time, urging the living to acknowledge their plight and the dark deeds that scarred the land. Amid scratching sounds and ghostly warnings, the truth emerges. The land holds untold stories of betrayal and bloodshed, where the past intertwines with the present in a harrowing tale of restless spirits and forgotten histories. Number 6. Dreams of Dread in the depths of a tormented household, an unseen terror lurks, weaving its way into the dreams of the unsuspecting. Voices whisper, shadows move, and the air thickens with despair. Holly's family suffers, torn apart by personality shifts and physical attacks. Ryan, just 11, recounts chilling encounters with a sinister figure, a creature with spider-like arms and a malevolent presence. Nightmares become reality as the lines blur between waking and sleep, the dragon gargoyle thing, lurking in the shadows, feeds on fear and drains the life force of the living. The energy in the room is palpable, suffocating, like being trapped on a spinning ride of terror. This malevolent entity, capable of hijacking dreams and spreading dread, holds the family in its grip, a nightmare they cannot escape. Still love him, but I don't know. A lot has been said and done that's very painful. That die came out of the wall. Oh yeah, the hat on, like a war hat. Number 5. The Yost Family's Haunting Presence In the silent corridors of an old house, paranormal investigators set up devices to capture the unseen. Shadows flicker, footsteps echo, and a music box comes to life on its own. Amy and her team invite the Yost Family, rumored to haunt the place, to interact. The music box responds to invisible hands, playing tunes as if directed by ghostly fingers. The atmosphere crackles with energy as the investigators witness the inexplicable. Lights dance, devices activate, and the presence of the Yost family becomes palpable. Is it curiosity or mischief that drives these spectral visitors? Their playful interactions with the investigators hint at a lingering attachment to the earthy realm, turning a simple investigation into a mesmerizing dance of the supernatural. Number 4. Connecting with the Unseen In a house heavy with unseen energies, Adam delves into the unknown using a spirit box. As questions unravel, a name emerges, and messages from the other side become clear. The family's dynamics seem entwined with the paranormal, amplifying tensions and unease. Elizabeth and Colton share their eerie experiences, hinting at a lurking presence. Adam, sensing the weight of the atmosphere, feels compelled to confront the entity. The spirit's messages urge action, hinting at a desire for resolution and peace. Armed with newfound insights, the team prepares to confront the entity in the basement, setting boundaries and seeking understanding. Will this encounter bring closure or unleash more mysteries from the spirit realm? Weird sleep meditative state. It's bizarre. This entity gave us a name. It was answering questions. It's peaceful sometimes, but it could get hectic. Number three, a heartbreaking tale of loss and haunting. Kim Soro echoes through the halls of her home in Wakahachi, Texas, as she recounts the tragedy that befell her husband, Angel. A once strong man, struck down by an inexplicable brain tumor, leaving Kim with a burden of guilt and grief. Haunted by the belief that her dream home harbors a malevolent force, Kim reaches out for help, fearing for her daughter's safety. Voices of children and screams of agony pierce the air, accompanied by physical attacks and eerie manifestations. The shadow of Angel's presence lingers, marked by bruises and bite marks, and a nightmarish episode where he seemed possessed. Kim's own encounters with scratches and apparitions leave her trapped in a house that feels more like a prison than a sanctuary. 
As the Unalive Files team investigates, the house reveals its dark secrets, a history tainted by tragedy, violence, and restless spirits. Will Kim and her daughter find solace and safety, or will the specter of loss continue to haunt them? Number 2. Haunted by Malevolent Spirits A chilling tale unfolds as a family's peaceful home turns into a nightmarish realm haunted by malevolent entities. The sinister presence of a unalive serial slayer, Clyde Carl Wilkerson, looms, causing havoc with banging sounds and disturbing stares. Another ghastly specter, a skeletal figure with burns, brings a sense of impending doom, capable of inflicting physical harm and even possessing the living. Terrifying incidents of being pulled out of bed and attempted suffocation in the unalive of night leave the family paralyzed with fear. With scratches, bruises, and unexplained pains, the family grapples with the sinister forces, fearing for their lives as they confront the horrors within their own home. Yes. This just blows my, my mind. And when did he die? Last year. Well, you even wake up with scratches and bruises. Yeah. Okay. Look, at this is one of the scratches you took pictures of. Actually, uh, that's part of the reason why I called you guys. Sometimes I can't go to sleep. Number one, battling a demonic entity. In a spine-chilling encounter, Ghost Adventures investigates a Colorado home harboring a sinister entity. As tensions rise, the team experiences intense anxiety and eerie voices mocking the Holy Trinity. The entity's chilling revelation about wanting Chris's soul sends shivers down their spines. A menacing presence manifests, with footsteps and a black shadow descending the stairs, visible only in visible light. Billy's EMF detector spikes as an ominous figure appears in the bathroom, raising alarms of imminent danger. The relentless pursuit of the paranormal truth leads to terrifying revelations, leaving them on the brink of supernatural terror. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.